guys, so welcome back to Number 9 Farms. Today I'm going to be making some forsythia jelly. And I have all my recipes in the book. And these, of course, there are a lot of them I've created myself because of the fact that I've had to adjust things based on how I make them. And what I'm going to be using a little jelly maker from Fresh Tech from ball canning and fresh preserving. Um, they've sold these at Walmart. And um, I've art, my husband actually picked all the flowers off the forsythia for me so I could make it, which was a really nice thing for him to do. And it smells so good. And what it is is I've taken um, four cups of water. I boiled the four cups of water. It was eight to, it was right at about eight and a half. I mean, it filled this whole thing up full of flowers. So it was about between eight and 10 cups. And uh, when I poured the four cups of um, water on here, I allowed it to cool, and then I put it in the refrigerator for 24 hours. That way it would make a nice tea, and that way it'd be ready for um, straining and make this jelly. So if you wanna get a little strainer in a pan, and the reason I've got this little pan is because it's still cold. Now if you can remember to take it out of the refrigerator the same, the next morning or the 24 hours is up and you get to make it, you could go ahead and take it out and let it get to room temperature. You wouldn't have to do this part. But some things don't always work that way. So I'm going to get a little uh, spatula so I can strain it a little better. And there's all kinds of other things you could do too with the um, forsythias. You could make some salves. You could infuse some oils with it. You can make a tea. Get all of that goodness out of there. And you know, for the forsythia this time of year is blooming everywhere and the trees are so beautiful alrighty so we're going to put that over here and now I've got um, probably a little bit more than what I'm going to need because I've wrote my recipe up for um, three and a half cups of tea so we're going to go ahead and put this on the stove and warm it up now I'm going to go ahead and warm this up so that it can be at least a little warm so when I put it in the jelly machine, it's not it's freezing cold. Just enough to get it room temperature, about 80 degrees, 75, whatever, just to take the chill off. So we're back, it warmed up really fast. And we're gonna go, oh my goodness, that scared me, that bottle popping. <laughs> Three and a half cups of the tea. And we're going to start with the little jelly maker because this is quick and easy and I don't want to stand over a hot gas stove. So I'm putting down um, six uh, tablespoons of pectinate and this is the dry pectin. And like I said, I pulled in the other videos, I buy this um, in a 50 pound bag. So that's six tablespoons. And the reason I know it's six tablespoons is because it's exactly what like the sure gel in the, the box. So, and then we're gonna pour the uh, tea on. And by warming it up, it helps the jelly maker to make the jelly better because what's happened is it's, um if it's cold, it, it can't heat up as well. So it doesn't get as hard, like firm, like the jelly should. So that's the reason I warm it up. And this is going to be um, four and a quarter cups of sugar. It's two, 
three, four, and a quarter. And I'm not much of a measurer, but some things I do measure out, so. And then you always want to shake your lemon juice. And I'm going to be doing three tablespoons of this. Alrighty. That helps add it because it's, since it's not acidified, you need to add some acid to it. And that's the reason that you um, always add lemon juice or apple cider vinegar or vine white vinegar, whatever you're doing. And now I'm gonna put the lid on and I'm gonna come around and I'm gonna use the jelly cycle. And I'm gonna go all the way to 30 and I'm gonna go enter and it's gonna do all the stuff for you. And now, in the book, it tells you to add the sugar after it's warmed up the um, the ingredient. But what I like to do is I always just do it this way because I have, uh, let's see, three, four, five of these machines. So if I, I have sometimes all five of them going at the same time, plus I'm trying to make jam too. So what I always did is I just went ahead and added the sugar so I didn't forget. And that was just my little way of uh, multitasking. So we'll be back and I'm gonna go ahead and get my jars ready, get my jars warmed up, everything, and we will finish this off. What will happen on the jelly? Now, if you go, it, it starts to do this. You could throw a little tiny pat of butter in there if you wanted to. But I find that it's best with jellies not to do that because it, sometimes you can see the little flat, fat gobble, globules, get that out, um, in the jelly. So I usually don't do it for the jellies, more so with the jams, it's okay. And uh, so what you want to do is you just want to crack the lid because like I said, I always force these machines. You're going to need to know that you've got to watch it because the minute that I turn my back and start doing something else, guess what happened? So you've got to watch it. And it does work. It just, you, you know, got to stay on it. It looks like it's going to be a beautiful color. We have it. It's completely finished. So now I'm going to get the skimmer. And we're going to skim off that little bit of foam. And we will go ahead and put our um, jelly in some jars. And of course, as you saw the overspill, uh, Bruce helped himself to... Uh, cleaning up the jelly that ran over. So now we're ready to go ahead. So what I do is I just take this out, um, always try to get off what I can, sit it down, and then I take and skim off. I bought this skimmer at uh, Amazon. And let me tell you something, it has been wonderful having this for all those years that I didn't have it and of course Bruce always eats the the foam that no need to waste it and people have told me stories how when they were a kid that that was the only part of the jelly that they wanted because their moms or dads would give it to them All right, and that's pretty good. So now we're gonna go ahead and fill the jars up. And it looks like I got a little tiny bit. Look at that beautiful color. It was already trying to set. It smells so good, so floral. And I'll go ahead and fill these jars up and then we'll uh, wipe the lids off and go ahead and put them in the canner. And like I said, this was uh, we got all this ready. Um, so we're gonna be using one of these today. It's already hot and I turned it down so that it would stop boiling. But look at that.
All right, wipe all your lids off and make sure, I always make sure that they're always wiped off really good. And they say nowadays that you don't have to put your lids in to the um, boiling water, but it's actually less than boiling, but uh, it's like 185 degrees. That, but I tell you right now, I still do it and I'm not gonna change anything. This, because they say now that the latex or whatever they're using, rubber, whatever it is, is uh, no need to do it, make it soft like years ago. And some of the older lids that I do have, um, they do have a different uh, type of stuff to it. So that must be true. But I'm going to just keep on doing what I do. And the, the jelly is really good. Bruce said that it has like a, um, a sweet, uh, sweet tart, kind of like a almost mm -hmm. flowery sweet taste. Delicious. And that's all you want to do is get your lids. And you don't have to tighten them up, but one little time. You know, years ago, we used to think we had to tighten them up like they were nobody's business. And now you just want to, one little, because that way the air can keep escaping out of the, um, the jar while it's in the canner. And now we're gonna go ahead and put them in the water bath canner and it's hot enough that, oh, Bruce, there's no, uh, there's no rock. You notice how quick we went, oh, Bruce. <laughs> because Bruce does all the um, prep work. That for was me. a test to see if she was going to graduate. <laughs> and, and he just failed his apprenticeship. <laughs> yes, because it will break every jar you put in there without that so rack. You always on. want to, and if um, Bruce comes over here, you can see some of the air escape as soon as you put him in there. Yeah, you can see the rack on the bottom now. I left it out. But if you watch it, the bubbles will start coming out of the jar. And then even, so what we do, I'm going to go 10 minutes on here for a water bath cannon. And um, then I let it sit for five minutes. And that additional five minutes lets um, even more air escape um, while it's starting to cool down. And then we go ahead and turn the thing on high. And... We start our timer once it gets to a rolling bowl. That's right. And for 10 minutes. And these are Fresh Tech water bath canners. And they do work quite well. And we have three of them. So this is a rolling boil. If you don't know, just in case, I'm throwing that out there. It's a boil that you can't stir down. You see the bubbles in this last five minutes still coming out. Mostly out of that one right over there. But it will come out. And then, of course, when you bring them out, they go ahead and seal right away. Well, sometimes you know they don't always, but they do mostly. So now I'm going to be getting it out of the canner. And of course, I gotta get my. See that one is still pot having little air bubbles come out. And you always want to sit it on a towel so that it can cool and separate them apart. So if they have airflow in them, they can cool faster. They're already starting to pop. You hear that? Look, we've already sealed. Guys, we're all done. And thank you for watching.